So it means that this topology stresses in current more than this topology. So this topology is more adapted for high power, very high power, and this one a little bit less. Push pull, we saw last time. Push pull has a high stress in voltage, twice as much at least as the sludge, twice as much because there is some ringing, spikes, etc. But the current is the same as the is the same as the uh, full branch because there are two branches in parallel and the two branches share equally the total color. And here this is the four by the one that is uh, simplest, uh, least expensive, but it has only one transistor. The four guy transistor has to do all the work. So if you compare the four of the full bridge, we have two times. Uh, the board current because here there's only one transistor that has to carry all the input current and here there will be larger than two times the voltage uh, switch, the voltage stress. <coughs> and moreover, these three topologies can have a duty cycle up to 80%, even higher, because the transformer is uh, well exploited. This one has a transformer that is not very well exploited. The maximum cycle you can practically achieve with the follow is just 50%, a little bit less. Okay? Control. How can we control a forward to work? Could <coughs> be uh, voltage mode or current mode, your choice. Both are okay. How can you control a full bridge converter? Both of them, you can choose a half bridge or full bridge. If you choose a, never mind. What is more the current mode? If you choose current mode, you are okay. If you choose a voltage mode for a full bridge, it's a very good idea to place a capacitor in series to the primary winding, because uh, that way you can remove any DC component that could be applied to the, primary, to the input of the primary winding of a transformer due to the asymmetries in the, your bridge, driving uh, asymmetries or uh, transistor asymmetries, etc. Have bridge. What is more or current mode? What is more only? Because in series to the primary winding there is a capacitor. 
and uh, you cannot uh, put together, use together current, current mode and capacitor because otherwise you will have a runaway on the voltage and you will have a very wide uh, pulse and a very narrow pulse. Push pull, current mode or voltage mode? Current, current mode is the very the better way because uh, you cannot place a capacitor in series to the wind. Every place you try to put a capacitor, you cut the DC, you cut the power. So this is uh, no capacitor in series to the primary winding, and uh, that means uh, current mode is a good choice. In some cases, you could uh, try to use a voltage mode, because uh, what's the problem of a symmetry? A symmetry generates uh, a current, uh, a DC current through the magnetizing process. If you have some uh, resistances, uh, losses in the primary winding, these resistances make uh, a voltage drop that could compensate for the third plus. It's not too expensive to make a current mode so This one current mode. Okay? That's a good. Power levels. Forward, uh, maximum. 200 watts. If you want, probably today there are better uh, MIS transistors, so you can go up a little bit, but it's just. Uh, a stress uh, that you, pour, you impose to the switches, to the switch, on the one, transformer, etc. Don't use it uh, for high power. Those are the high power uh, guys, especially full bridge is the highest power guy, but if you are low input voltage, full bridge will not be a good idea because a full bridge has uh, uh, two switches, it seems to be. So if you have only 12 volts, uh, 15 volts, the input uh, don't use a full bridge problem. It used to, I learned that full bridge uh, up to 2 kilowatts, uh, there is uh, up to 500 watts, 1 kilowatt, there is up to 500 watts, 1 kilowatt. Yes, more or less, but you can even go higher. Nowadays, there are very, very powerful and good uh, MIS transistors, so you can do it just to The full bridge is the only one for the high power, so you can go up to megawatts. Obviously, you cannot use a small MIS transistor, you have to use a large GPT transistor or whatever it is, but you can go up uh, as much as you want with this one, almost. Half range, uh, yeah, one kilowatt probably. Push pull, you can go up uh, quite a lot, like two kilowatts or so. You stress the components if you go up in, uh, in uh, power, but uh, in some cases, it's the only way to, to, to go. Okay? So, let's talk about power supplies used in a uh, desktop computer. What's the power level of a desktop computer power supply? 500 watts. 500 watts, a little bit less, a little bit more, depends uh, on how strong is your, how powerful is your uh, graphic board and CPU to play uh, games, uh, etc. I don't think you use a desktop for uh, working. Desktop are used for playing, obviously. Few hundred watts. Input voltage of a power supply for a desktop computer. It's the It's the mains. 230 watts. This is another mass one. So when you rectify it, the peak goes around uh, 301 watts. So what's the best topology to choose among those? This one, half bridge is the best one. Push pull, no, because push pull uh, with the 300 watts input gives you at least 600 watts of uh, stress on, uh, on transistors. And there are transistors with 600 watts, but it's not a good idea to increase the water stress because the higher is the voltage rating of a transistor, the higher is it, its uh, RDSO, its resistance. Full bridge could be interesting for uh, the high level uh, um, converters like uh, 600, 700 watts or so, but four transistors cost more than two transistors. So in a power, in a power supply for the desktop, so the main uh, parameter to optimize is cost. It has to cost nothing, or even less than nothing. So typically, this one is the, is the right uh, topology. Typically. Nowadays, uh, with power going up and uh, more strict uh, rules uh, being enforced, uh, even 
desktop uh, power supplies have a PFC stage in front of them. In some cases, uh, old time, uh, the old times, the, the PFC was just a passive PFC, that means a large inductor. Nowadays they use an active PFC with a boost converter, and if they use a boost converter, they get 400 volts. So 400 volts of the input means this is completely, is definitely ruled out, this is definitely ruled out, we are left with these two, and possibly it's a half bridge. This is power supply of a node, not power supply of a desktop computer. And uh, can you see from the very last row? Your son, your nickname is uh, Eco Joe. Here, uh, and let's open the counter. Here, there are, there is the input on this side, the four diodes are over here, and this is the great bridge rectifier. There are no filters, no EMI filters, because this is a very lousy, bad uh, power supply. Modern power supplies here have a large uh, set of components for the filtering. Here there are two electrolytic capacitors. Oh, look. Those capacitors are 330 microfarads, 200 volts. So those are the input capacitor. And uh, probably those are uh, transformers for my power supply. With a um, heat sink, this heat sink uh, is referred to the transistors probably, because we are close to the input side. Ah, oh, surprise! This is power supply, and I have uh, three transformers. You see here. I can't say if those are transformers, coupled inductors, or whatever, but uh, I call them transformers because they look like transformers. And there is one large and two small. Okay, the one large probably is the transformer of the main uh, power supply. This one, the very left one, over here, is uh, a transformer, actually a couple inductor of a flyback converter, because here inside there are two power supplies. There is the main power supply, supplying the 5 volts, uh, 12 volts, etc., last power, 300 volts or whatever, and then, and then there is also a 5 volts power supply, that is always there and is providing 5 volts only, 1 amp maximum, that is used to keep something alive in your computer. That could be the switch on uh, power on, power on, power on lay, no, power on lay, on, uh, for the lay. When, when you can switch a, a, a computer on from the net, from the... Wake on LAN. Wake on LAN. Wake on LAN. Wake on, on LAN. Wake on LAN. Wake up on LAN. Wake on LAN. Or the keyboard. Keyboard is still on. If you notice when you switch the uh, computer is off, probably a light on the keyboard is on, a light is, is on. And this is just a 5 volt, uh, 1 amp, 5 volt overall flyback converter and this is done with these uh, couple inductors. The other two are transformers for the main power supply and the main power supply has this it's transformer over here and this is a transformer used to drive uh, the high side, the, trans the two transistors. Basically, let's see the topology. The topology, we have two large input capacitors and, uh, I don't know if it's visible over here, there is one field capacitor. That's film capacitor. Let's go to read the value. No, the value is obviously on the other side. Value is one microfarad or so. For, and if you have like one capacitor, film capacitor, here in the area of the transistors, it means that uh, probably these are half bridge. This is the uh, two electrolytic capacitors large and one small, uh, small one microfarad field capacitor is to the primary winding. On this side, we have the main transistors. There are three of them because there are the two transistors of the half bridge plus one transistor of the flyback. Flyback is a part, it's a different plan. From the main uh, transformer, there are many outputs, uh, many secondary windings that go to these uh, rectifiers. 
those are the power rectifiers. Uh, they look like transistors with three pins because uh, a rectifier for a half bridge uh, needs to, uh, to use two diodes, uh, center tap, and two diodes are included in the same package. So these uh, three pins, uh, three pin devices over here, they look like transistors, but uh, those are two diodes with common anode locator, I don't know. And then over here, there is uh, the output inductor, only one. But if you notice, the windings have different wires of uh, different colors because those are output uh, output windings. So with one uh, secondary uh, inductor only, we have multiple windings and we can uh, use it for all the three or four or whatever are the uh, number of DC outputs over here. Okay. Okay. That's it. I used to have also an AC adapter for a laptop, but I didn't find it anymore. Uh, somewhere in my office. Actually, I have two of them, but one I still have to hold and it a little bit better. Okay. So far so good. Okay. Yeah, it's problems, questions, problems. Observation, remarks. Could be theory, could be problems, examples, this. So, for the bridge and for the weather, you know that just between current and voltage models, you can choose randomly. Not really randomly, it depends uh, on your. Uh, Experience and what you want to emphasize. Usually, for uh, full bridge, I go for uh, current mode because you have advantages, but you have disadvantages as well. For example, you have to add, uh, you have to add a transform, current transform, or a current sensing in any case. If it's possible, I I would like to prefer going to current mode because uh, you have a uh, switch protection. That helps. That is a uh, good help. But if you want to go for this mode, be my guest. Did you watch the design examples I put online? Yes. I still try to put online all the design, all the parts of, of, of the forward and full bridge on the either section. I did succeed. We talked with the uh, computer guys uh, handling this uh, system. They told me, oh, it should be okay now. No, it's not okay. But anyway, all the files, all the, new, uh, all the videos are is a material at the other section. No questions? Please. Uh, when we have to choose the working voltage for a festival, do we have to choose it according to a series or what we want is for capacitors, for a capacitor is given by, the nominal voltage is given by the typically R5 uh, series, that is uh, 10, 16, 25, 40, 63. And you have also extra values in your vehicles. You can find a 50 volt capacitor, you can find you can find 20 volt capacitor maybe, or something like this. Just go. Those numbers will be at the bottom of your text page. And uh, the guide of the not on only the R5, there's also R10, R20 that are not used for uh, electronics. 
they are used, I think, when using mechanics. And the fact that it's 5, 10, 20 means that the guy who made this stuff had uh, 10 fingers. And uh, the E12, E24, etc., was made in the United States where people have uh, 12 fingers on it because they got no other explanation as to why uh, they have a so complicated and nightmare inducing measurement systems. Measurement units. Uh, in one lesson, we see that uh, the switching converter okay. and general load have to adhere to the uh, supply from the company that uh, gives supply as a uh, simple resistor. Is already a condition that is uh, expected, for example, also for, uh, for that one, because we have uh, in CGS, we, we don't. We have to implement it uh, from the controller point of view in uh, some cases. Okay, um, you mean for the exam or the, no, the real world? Mm, for example, also for, for that. Where this one has no PFC because it's uh, very lousy all the low power power supply. Nowadays they have to include a, part, a sort of PFC. Mm. And. Uh, do you remember how a PFC is made? That's a boost converter. We have basically a glass bridge rectifier, and here we do not put any large capacitor. Because if you put a here capacitor, you make a sort of a peak detector. This capacitor charges on the peak voltage and keeps more or less the voltage around the peak value. So there is here a capacitor, but it's a small capacitor. This is only used for high frequencies, or only used for um, noise, electromagnetic noise. And then we have inductor. What else? Switch. Dial. And a large output capacitor. And this large output capacitor uh, is used both to hold the high frequency and to hold the energy at low frequency because the input voltage of a signal is just something like this. And if you square this input voltage, oh, this is the input voltage, the input current will be exactly the same shape, and just a scale by, by a, a suitable factor that will be current. And if you square, if you multiply voltage at times current, you get power, and the power goes to zero every 10 milliseconds. And so the power, the input power, will be something like this. That's a side shot. And this capacitor, this actual capacitor, must store the extra energy when there is this bonanza, bonanza and must deliver energy when there is a lack of uh, power coming from energy or power coming from the <coughs> So this capacitor will have a ripple, for sure, guaranteed. Ripple to the first ripple on this capacitor will be at 100 hertz, and this capacitor must not be corrected by the control system. Because if you, if you reduce the, with the feedback, you remove the ripple from this capacitor, it means that it's the <coughs> constant power, except in constant power. And if you try to accept constant power from this kind of voltage, current will be exactly the, what you don't want. If this is your voltage, and you want to absorb a constant power from the voltage, current will be just the constant power divided by the voltage. And the current will be something like this. This is exactly what you don't want. And uh, not only the bandwidth of this controller must be very small, but you need to control the average current to this capacitor, to this inductor, because you want to control this yellow current to average <coughs> shape. So 
The basic idea is, this is the controller of a PFC. I didn't uh, go to this uh, details uh, during the class, but we have a minutes now, we can do it. You have to measure the current of this inductor, and This is basically a sort of compensator, the compensator of the loop current, but it is also a low pass filter. And this low pass filter is what uh, um, makes uh, the measurement of the average. When you low pass a uh, signal, you get the average of the signal. So we, we are not interested to the report to this uh, inductor. We need to just to know this average of the value. So if you put here, reference signal this <coughs> is something like this and we go from the output of this error amplifier to our feeder behind modulator we force the average input current to follow this wave so the feedback is not measuring the output voltage the first feedback is measuring the input current and the input current is forced by this feedback loop to follow, to follow what? The rectified voltage. So, this is what I am going to draw it. It's not the final version, it's still just an intermediate step. So, we take this voltage, we divide it with the voltage divider and we go to drive our system over there. So we apply to this uh, current loop a signal, that is something like this, this current loop forces the input current to, be, to follow the input voltage. So we have exactly this situation. Are you happy with this solution? <coughs> no. Okay. In practice, we have the switch closed only when the, we have a zero power uh, Right. No, no, it's not like this because this <coughs> PWM works, let's say, at 100 kilohertz. This stuff is at 100 hertz. This compensator, co current loop compensator, is a low pass filter. It senses the 100 hertz, it can work at 100 hertz. The bandwidth of this could be, let's say, uh, 5 kilohertz, 1 kilohertz, something like this. So it can handle this voltage, but it basically is not sensitive to the ripple frequency. So the switch switches at 100 kilohertz and it is the multi cycle is controlled by this um, by the signal. <coughs> Are you happy with this solution? No, because what happens if you use this solution? It happens that the current you take is proportional to the input voltage, you like it, but with a constant factor. It's proportional by a constant factor. It means that you take a constant power, I mean constant average power from the input. If the constant power that you take, the constant average power that you can take from the input is equal to the output power you need, that's okay. But if the load needs less power, you are taking more power than the load it takes. And so the extra power goes into the capacitor and the output voltage starts to increase. If you remove the load over here, or you make your load uh, quite light, you don't need to take this much current. You need to take a lower current. For a light load, probably you need just a current that is lower. How can you change uh, the amount of current that uh, is taken by this uh, circuit? We need a proportional uh, reference to the, uh, the load. I have to change this one. If I put here, for example, it's not the way that uh, it's done, but if you put here a variable resistor, I can change the amount of current that is taken. Well, I cannot do it uh, by hand. I have to do it uh, uh, automatically, keeping the output voltage constant. They see the output voltage uh, going up and it's, oh, I am taking too much average power, so I decrease this uh, reference signal. If I see the input voltage, the output voltage, sorry, is going down, means, oh, I, don't, I am not uh, taking too, too enough power from the main, so let's increase the current. 
And this is done with the second loop. <coughs> that measures the output voltage goes to a uh, neuron amplifier. And this error amplifier must not produce the ripple from the output voltage. So this error amplifier, this compensator for the voltage loop, must have a bandwidth that is 10 Hz or less. Because uh, you don't want to correct to sense the ripple here, because the ripple is not it's used. It's right. And then according to the voltage, the error voltage you get over here, you change the volume of this uh, signal. Change the well, not the, the ratio, but the, 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 the voltage divider <coughs> ratio, because you cannot change the resistance easily. <coughs> but uh, in an uh, analog, you can take this signal <coughs> and shrink it or increase it according to the DC value you get from here. So it's a sort of uh, volume control controlled by this DC value. How could you change the amplitude? of this signal according to this uh, DC value, this almost a DC value. Uh, <coughs> we, huh? we have to make a sort of, uh, sort of multiplication. Between we have to multiply this voltage times this voltage. So this is just basically a multiplier. This is the basic uh, PFC control uh, uh, system. We have a uh, sort of a fast loop, fast means a uh, few kilohertz loop to shape the input current. The wider is this bandwidth, the better is the waveform, the current waveform that you generate. But you start to get uh, noise in. So this uh, loop could have a bandwidth of a few kilohertz or so. Far more than 100 hertz, that is this frequency, and uh, <coughs> quite less than the 100 kilohertz, that is the switching frequency. And this control loop, the current control loop, is modulated, is controlled by the input voltage, half wave, uh, full wave rectified uh, voltage, that is um, controlled in amplitude by the output voltage. If the output voltage goes up, this voltage comes down, and if the voltage comes down, the multiplication becomes a smaller value, so the output voltage decreases. Okay? Possible. This is the basic principle. Uh, this loop, the voltage loop, must be very narrow bandwidth, few hertz, because you don't want to correct the ripple of the heat. The ripple of the heat here is okay. And the output voltage is around 400 volts, it is less. <coughs> With this circuit, you could, uh, in principle, go from uh, Australia, where the main is uh, 240 volts, uh, to um, Japan, where the main is uh, 100 volts, and the boost can always boost the voltage, uh, no matter what the input, up to 400 volts. But if you do this, you discover that your uh, voltage loop gain changes dramatically with the input voltage and if you decide it to have a bandwidth of 10 Hz in Australia, when you move to Japan, the bandwidth is probably 1 Hz, 2 Hz, 1 and a half Hz, because it depends on the square of uh, the input voltage. Is it okay to have a 1 Hz uh, bandwidth over here of 10 Hz? <coughs> yeah. Okay, you don't need, you don't sense any any ripple here, for sure, but if this loop is too small and you have a change in the output of the load, the voltage changes, it takes a long time to recover. So you don't want this, because if you remove the load, your output voltage will start to increase, and it could increase, too, it could increase too much. So you don't want to lose the dynamic properties when you change the input voltage dramatically. And so there are other systems to compensate for this effect. But if you need this to design a car, um, PFC, read all the data sheets uh, and, uh, and uh, application notes and books, etc. <coughs>
Okay?
credit because it makes it's acceptable. It's not the best, but in some cases you could be forced into this. I am designing right now a, a converter, more or less with these specs. Not <coughs> to 17 amps, but to play safe, I designed it to 20 amps. And uh, exactly with these specs, and I designed it as a full bridge because I needed, absolutely needed due to the kind of load, a current mode converter, current mode control. So, current mode will have bridge, cannot be done, I had to move through the full bridge. If you choose for this a flyback, that's zero, gives you zero points for the credit uh, as a credit <coughs> mode, topology choice. What I look for in your uh, written exam, for the design part, is choose a choice of topology, um, power stage, including losses, modeling, transfer function, and compensator. The first one, the first point you get, you get uh, four points out of the total. The first one is an easy point. Just don't make a very bad mistake picking a flyback for this and you get something for the final rating uh, uh, exam. Okay? So half bridge is a good choice. Full bridge could be a, a good choice. Push pull is not a good choice. That is definitely a no because with forward <coughs> it's really too much for a push pull. And the forward, the 600 watt for a forward is really too much. So half bridge. What frequency do we choose? Frequencies depend on the output power. The higher the power, the lower is the frequency, and on the topology. I mean, if it is a buck converter, you can go very high. If you have a transformer, you cannot go too much high because you have uh, leakage inductance uh, inductances that uh, uh, will kill you. So let's say maximum 100 kilohertz or even less. Let's suppose switching frequency 100 kilohertz. It should be okay, but expect uh, bad surprises when you have your transformer in your hands and you start to measure with leakage inductances and you mount it and you discover that you have very uh, high uh, ringing or uh, strange behavior, etc. And then, what else? <coughs> That's probably schematic. So, we start to have an idea what we have to do. Oh, half bridge. Do we use uh, two capacitors, uh, two large capacitors and a small uh, series capacitor, two small series capacitors, two small uh, capacitors, whatever. But can't do much, whatever you want to try with D. Let's suppose that here have two large uh, electrolytic capacitors and here we have a CD, our primary capacitor. Primary winding of my transformer and here two switches. 400 volts, while well, probably we can use MOS transistors. It's a good idea to use MOS transistors because uh, well, if you have to save some money, use uh, bipolar transistors. Bipolar transistors cost less than, uh, than MOS transistors, but they, they are slower. You have to supply a larger <coughs> base current. So, two MOS transistors could be okay. And here we have a secondary winding. And, and see now, dot up, dot up is MP, is MS, MS. Oh, you told me switching frequency 100 kilohertz. Is this refer to the switches to the transformer or is it refer to the bulk of the switch? Transformer. Switch. So, the bulk of has a 
an actual uh, switching frequency that is what else can we choose before going in into any form of calcul calculation? Maximum to the cycle. Maximum to the cycle. D minus. <coughs> Divided by two times 
tumpando el piloto.